Hey folks, this is Riker, bringing you a Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls guide to a powerful, leaderboard-topping, demon hunter build using the Unhallowed Essence set. Now this build is based on both practical observations as well as theoretical calculations made by Wudijo, who is one of the world's top demon hunter players. If you haven't heard of Wudijo, he's the man who basically single-handedly shifted the 2.12 demon hunter meta the overarching strategy that the community used from a cold cluster arrow marauder build to a physical cluster arrow marauder build. Through rigorous calculations, he found that when pushing higher greater rifts, physical actually outperforms cold. Not by a huge degree, but enough for that to be substantial to top players. Now, Udicho has run some new calculations on the new Unhallowed Essence set, and he's even made public his master spreadsheet that he uses to run all his math. So if you want to take a look at that behemoth and try to plug numbers in yourself, you can find a link to that in the description below. But what I'll present to you is the skinny on his observations and a build that you can put into effect immediately to start pushing greater rifts in the 50s. Now, the first thing that Udicho found, and this should come as no surprise to anyone who's tried out the new set, is that Unhallowed Essence is strictly superior to Marauders, at least in terms of overall damage output, and consequently pushing the highest greater rifts. The revised Natalia set actually lands somewhere in the middle. Wudijo has not done extensive testing with Natalia's, but he believes it's at least on par with Marauders and could potentially compete with Unhallowed Essence, but further testing is required. Nonetheless, back to Unhallowed Essence, there are two main builds being used right now, Lightning and Fire, and Wudicho found that Lightning outperforms Fire, so it is the Lightning build that we will be showing today. Now, if you're familiar with the old Meticulous Bolts build that was popular back in 2.1, then this will look very familiar. You will need a Crider Shot for this build. So let's take a look at the skills. First, you'll use Elemental Arrow, Ball, Lightning. And the reason for this is that your Crider Shot turns Elemental Arrow into a generator rather than a spender. So Ball Lightning is what we'll be using to generate Hatred. And the reason we select this rune is because we're also running with Meticulous Bolts. This slows down the Lightning Ball. And the slower the Lightning Ball travels through an enemy, the more times it ticks, the more times it strikes that enemy. So if it's traveling a third of the speed, it's striking three times as often, thus dealing three times as much damage. Now next, we're using Multi-Shot, and we're using the Lightning Room Fire at Will. This is because the Unhallowed Essence set revolves around buffing your generators, of which Elemental Arrow is now one of them, and Multi-Shot. Every point of discipline you have will buff that by 15%. So for that reason, we want to maximize the amount of discipline we have. So we're taking Preparation Invigoration. That increases your max discipline by 15, which translates into 225% additional damage. Next skill, you're going to want Vault Tumble. Now, in the past, people would go with Smokescreen. But there's a number of problems with Smokescreen now. The first being that you can no longer Perma Smokescreen. Blizzard changed the way the cooldown on it works so you can't maintain that permanent invulnerability anymore. So apart from that, it costs more discipline than tumble, and discipline translates into damage. And the amount of maneuverability that Vault gives you in the hands of a skilled player far outweighs the benefit of a tiny period of invulnerability. Now the next skill will depend on whether you're playing Season or Non-Season. If you are playing Non-Season and do not have access to the Ice Blink Legendary Gem, you will need Sentry Polar Station. That's what will be proccing your Call of the Weak and Bane of the Trapped. If, however, you do have an Ice Blink, you will instead take Caltrops Bait the Trap. And you're going to use this to grant yourself 10% increased critical hit chance. And lastly, you'll be taking Marked for Death Contagion. Yes, it's costing you discipline, but the fact that it spreads to other enemies means you won't have to be casting it all that often. Lastly, for your passives, you will want Call the Weak Steady Aim, Single Out, Awareness, and if you have a Hellfire Amulet, you'll also take Ambush. Now as for gear, you're going to want to have the full six pieces of Unhallowed Essence. And this is so that you don't have to use a Ring of Royal Grandeur, and could instead use Focus and Restraint. The Bastion of Will set, those two rings, that have been proven to be far superior than any other ring setup. Between spamming Multi-Shot and Elemental Arrow, you should always have up the two 50% damage buffs. Now, of course, as we said, you need a Crider Shot and Meticulous Bolts. A Witching Hour will be the belt that maximizes your damage. 
For your amulet, you'll want either an S of Johan or a Hellfire amulet. And for your bracers, you can go with either Reaper's Wraps, Steady Strikers, or Lacuni Prowlers. And the reason you'll want the Strikers or the Prowlers is because they grant increased attack speed. As for what stats you want on your gear, you want a spec to be a Glass Cannon. First off, stack plus max discipline wherever you can. Remember, every one point of discipline is 15% more damage that you're dealing. Apart from that, try to get resource cost reduction everywhere you can apart from jewelry. But prioritize increased attack speed over resource cost reduction. Unlike certain past Demon Hunter builds, faster attack speed does benefit this build, just not as much as critical hit chance and critical hit damage. Be sure to get area damage on your shoulders, multi-shot damage on your quiver, elite and area damage wherever you can, and for your amulet, you'll want lightning damage, critical hit damage, critical hit chance, and a socket. If you can't get that set up, prioritize lightning damage and critical hit damage. Those are stronger than dex or critical hit chance, in this slot specifically. One final note, you have no use for cooldown reduction in this build. Or rather, cooldown reduction benefits you far less than anything else. As for your legendary gems, you need Bane of the Trapped and Zay Stone of Vengeance. Zay's makes you deal more damage the further away you are from your enemies, and this combines well with the 4-piece set bonus that further encourages you to stay the hell away from enemies. You know, in case getting killed wasn't incentive enough. For your last gem, if you're playing solo, get the Ice Blink if you're playing seasonal, or if you're playing non-seasonal and don't have access to Ice Blink, get Taeguk. Or if you're playing in groups or going for Torment 6 speedruns, go with Bane of the Powerful. As for Paragon points, standard advice applies. Get your total move speed up to 25%, then dump everything else into dexterity. For offense, crit damage, crit chance, and attack speed. For defense, all resist, life, and armor. And for utility, resource cost reduction, area damage, and then life on hit. That wraps up this guide. Thanks for watching. If you want to see some top level Demon Hunter play, be sure to check out Wudijo's Twitch stream. You can find a link to that in the description below. Check out these other videos, and if you enjoyed this one, share with friends, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders.